Hey, hey. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, hey, everybody. How is everybody doing today? How is everyone doing today? Um, Today, I want to speak with you all about uh, something that has to do with our, um, you know, about the things that we go through and stuff like that. I just want to talk to you about it and see what you have to say about it, see what you think about it, and and just really, um, you know, really um, just try to get us to see things from a different perspective on how we can really move in our own life, you know, stuff like that. So, so let me begin to speak to you all. This your boy, Hood. Pastor Full Impact Ministries, the social media ministry. Y'all know what we do. We bring this thing to a serious head on the truth about his true nature towards us. And, and first of all, I want to present an opportunity to you all who all have bad credit, which a whole heap of us have bad credit. And I want to present an opportunity to you all to whereas if you are having trouble with your credit and you want to rebuild your credit, you want to rebuild your life, you want to, re and you want to begin to feel some real freedom, some real relief, and you're tired of going places and getting denied, you're tired of this here and there, you're tired of the embarrassment and the shame, DM me and we'll talk. Got some things brewing. So that we can go ahead and get ourselves right in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, Antoinette. Hey, hey, Annette. So we can go ahead and just get ourselves right. Because our uh, credit, and once I begin to learn this here, our credit is major. Our credit can make or break our entire natural life. Our credit. Our credit. Our credit scores are so important. They are they are major. And we have to begin to get a different mindset. We have to begin to, we have to begin to get a different mindset so that we can begin to get a different lifestyle versus constantly struggling, going through from check to check and job to job and relationship and relationship. And we look up, we 40, 50, 60 years old, and we still and we're still living the same way, trying to get up out of that. No, no. So we need to really change our mindset right now so that we can begin to grow, to grow, to grow in a positive way to where our lives can begin to have some real substance so that we can truly live a life that can be generational, generational, generational. So that's why I want to speak on the distractions of situations, the distractions of situations. And I want to uh, speak on this here, and I'm going to give us some uh, scriptures. I'm going to give us a situation where John the Baptist was in. And it was the distractions in his situations that caused him to look outside of his purpose and I want you all to see yourself in this here so you can begin to look at your own life and you can look at the situation in it and you can begin to see the distractions that's in it from keeping you from your purpose. And this is when Jesus began to um, speak to his people. And over in chapter 10 in the Gospel of Matthew, this is when he gave his disciples power to, uh, to, to cast out spirits and to heal people. So over in Matthew chapter 11, this is where we're going to start from, and I'm, and I'm going to read from Amplified. He said, when Jesus had finished his charge to his 12 disciples, he left there to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John in prison heard about the activities of Jesus, he sent a message by his disciples. Now, John the Baptist heard about what Jesus was doing, and he still sent his disciples to send a message to Jesus because John the Baptist was in jail at this time because he'd come up against King 
Herod, and he was in jail at the same time. So now, so now he's in a situation. He's in a situation. Now we're talking about the same John the Baptist. Now watch this here. Verse uh, 3. And he sent his disciples and asked him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we keep on expecting a different one? Now this the same John the Baptist over in Matthew, over in Matthew chapter 3, who saw the Spirit reside over Jesus. This was the same John the Baptist in chapter 3 who saw Jesus coming and told the people, this is him who I've been talking about all this time. This the man, this my man, 100 grand. I've been talking about him all the time. This who coming right here. This is the same John the Baptist who Jesus told him that it is a must that you baptize me. This is the same John the Baptist who said, I'm not even worth to baptize you. You come to me to baptize you. And Jesus told him, suffer it to be so. The same John the Baptist. But his situation, boy, but his situation detoured his vision of what his purpose was. This is what happened to many of us. The situations become a distraction. It is the distractions that's in the situation that have us to lose focus on our real purpose. On our real purpose. Yeah, you're in a situation, but but you have a purpose. You're in a real situation, but you have a purpose. You have a purpose, watch this, that has much more to do with more than you. Man, when I see, 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 many of us have to come up out of being selfish. Our prayers are selfish. Everything about us is, is selfish. It's nothing about other people. And you wonder why the situation is so thick on you. The situation has so strong a handcuffs on you because your situation is filled with selfishness. And unknowingly in a lot of Time because we all want to come up out of bondage. Well, most of us, we want to come up out of bondage. And we just want to know how to get up out of this hill. But but I've learned the best way to come up out of bondage is to think about other other folk. Watch this. Watch this. And Jesus replied to them. Jesus replied to John the Baptist's two disciples. Because you got to remember now. John the Baptist is the one that baptized Jesus. And the Holy Spirit came and remained on Jesus. And John the Baptist saw this here. Jesus had to be baptized by John the Baptist. This is why Jesus told him, suffer it to be so. Jesus had to be baptized with John the Baptist because John the Baptist had the Holy Ghost in him, in his mammy's womb, in his mother Elizabeth's womb which was Mary's cousin, Jesus' mammy. And the Bible said that John the Baptist had the Holy Ghost in him while he was still in his mammy womb. Jesus himself didn't have that. God in the flesh didn't have that. And Jesus said, I came to you to get baptized. We have, this is a must done because you got something that I need. Boy, shut up, Jesus. You got something that I need to pursue my mission. You got one of the key elements. You and, and I need to get it from you. I can't get it from nowhere else. You got it. You had the Holy Ghost in you, in your mammy womb, boy, which is my auntie. I need to get, I, I need to, I, I need that from you. And he baptized Jesus. And the Holy Spirit came and remained on Jesus. Your, your situation will distract you from understanding that your purpose is not just for you. It's for other folk. But you'll get so caught up in your situation to the spirit of selfishness will come on unknowingly in a lot of times. The spirit of selfishness will come on because you're so determined and so eager to get up out of the situation. And a lot of it is built on fear, which will roll over into doubt and unbelief because he said, 
Go and ask this man, is he the one? And you know he the one. You just saw him. You told us he the one. But now your situation have you to recant your situ have you to recant your statement. Just like a lot of us. But see, there is hope. There is hope and there is help. If we just get back up, even in the situation, and connect to Jesus, and he would give us the key. Watch this. This is what he told John the Baptist disciples. Verse 4. And Jesus replied to them, go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news, the gospel preached to them. And blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is he who takes no offense at me and finds no cause for stumbling in or through me and is not hindered from seeing the truth. Jesus told him, go and show him what you sin. Because they, cause they came and said, we was told by John the Baptist, man, our, our chief, we were told to come and ask you, are you the one? Now, we know this joker just told us you the one. Hey. But his situation sent us to you to ask you this question, are you the one? Because now there's a little doubt and unbelief in there. Your situation is a distraction. Your situation, some of the distractions are doubt and unbelief. Your situation, some of the distractions are double-mindedness. And we have to be strong in our situation so that we can stay focused on the purpose at hand, so we can stay focused on the cause that's at hand, and we'll understand that it's not just about a hey, me. If we stay focused on our real purpose, it'll begin to deliver us from a lot of selfishness, from a lot of fear, from a lot of doubt, from a lot of unbelief, from a lot of cheapness, from a lot of greediness. And Jesus told him, go show, go tell him what you've seen. You've seen the gospel work, boy. You've seen me do the thing that I come to do, boy. You've seen me. You go tell him this what this is about. So get your mind right just because you're in a situation. This is what's happening. It's not just about you and your situation. It's about other folks getting, getting cured. It's about other folks coming up out of bondage. It's about other folks getting healed. It's about other folks' lives transitioning into a level that only God can bring them to. Go tell John the Baptist that. Go tell my cousin John the Baptist that. Go tell him that his time is up. And now the situation, he don't have to worry about that. Because I took the baton. Ah, yeah, you was the forerunner. I took the baton. And I'm running full steam ahead like the boat. Ah, I got this. Don't worry about it, player. Watch this. Verse 7. Then as these men went their way, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. Like many people, you know, when they come with something and when they turn it back and gone, Jesus ain't like us. You're going to talk behind folks back and all this here. But Jesus began to speak about John the Baptist to the people and listen to what he said about John the Baptist. Even in this situation, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed in the wind. So he's asking them, so he's really being sarcastic to, to, the, to the people. Verse 8, what did you go out to, to see then? A man clothed in soft garments? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in the houses of kings. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, and more than a prophet. 
He's putting John the Baptist on a scale that's more than a prophet. There's more than anybody in the scriptures. There's more than a prophet. There's more than anybody in the Old Testament. He's more than all of them. Yet he's working with doubt and unbelief right now because of the situation. Those are the distractions that's in the situation. But his real purpose was to let folk know his, his real purpose was to heed the call. Ah. His real purpose was to heed the clarion call that, that I'm on the way for a bigger message, for a bigger mission. And your purpose, your purpose is much bigger than you. So don't let the distractions of your situation have you to lose focus on your purpose. Your purpose is much bigger than you. Your purpose is for legacies. Your purpose is for other folk. Yeah, you want to live good, of course. That's your inheritance. But your purpose is for other people. It's for other people to transform. Your inheritance is to live good. Of course, no, no doubt I, I, I'm in full agreement with that. I started to flip out the chair. I couldn't though. I'd have hurt myself. But I'm in full agreement with us living like royalty. I mean, if I'm a I'm a firm believer, if anybody should live in royalty, it should be God's children. I'm a firm believer of that. But we cannot let the distractions of our situations get us through our focus. Because the purpose that we have is much deeper than us. Much deeper than us. I'm almost done with this here. But what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, more than a prophet. Verse 10. This is the one of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who shall make ready your way before me. Truly, I tell you, this is what Jesus is saying about John the Baptist, his cousin. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Jesus put this man on a pedestal to where he said there has been nobody on the planet greater than John the Baptist. Nobody. Although he let his situation get him distorted in the distractions, Jesus didn't even, Jesus didn't even deal with his distractions. He said, there's a greater message at hand. There's a greater cause. His purpose was for me to come to save the lost. His purpose was for me to come to get God's wrath off of you. His purpose was for me to come for you to be joint heirs with me. His purpose was for me to come so that you can speak those things that be not as though they were. His purpose was for me to come so that you can have peace, so that you can have power, so that you can have the kingdom of God inside of you and so that you can get delivered from all type of religious spirits and all kind of foolishness. Your purpose is greater than you. Your purpose is for other people. Do not let the distractions of your situation get you off focus of your purpose. Stay focused on your purpose. And Jesus told John the Baptist disciples, go tell John what you see. Go tell John that what you are seeing is his purpose. Ah, being manifested in the flesh. Hey, my God. Go tell John the Baptist that although he's in a situation, his purpose, hey, I'm liking, I feel it right here, is being manifested. <laughs> Go tell John the Baptist that although he's in a situation and although he has let his situation get him caught up in the distractions of the situation, his purpose, hey, 
is still going forth. Remember, you have a purpose and it's not just about you. You have to leave a legacy. You have to leave generational wealth with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, finances, if, if you can. But, but we have to stop allowing our situations to get us caught up in the distractions of the situations. It's just like many of y'all now don't even have a, a life insurance policy, a will, a trust fund, nothing. If you're struggling with all that, DM me, DM your boy, he hood, and we'll talk about it. Many of you all need to get your credit in awesome shape because you're way down there. If you're having issues in all this stuff, DM me, and we can get some things right. John the Baptist got distracted in his situation, and he forgot what his purpose was. He said that his purpose was to baptize you with water, but he was leading the way. He was the forerunner. He was the one who was hurling the call of the one who was coming to baptize with fire. But his situation, the distraction, got him off of his purpose. Don't allow your situation to get you distracted from your purpose because that is the intention of your situation to get you distracted off your purpose. And Jesus had to remind them, do not let your situation get you distracted from your purpose cause, because your purpose is going forth full throttle because I'm here. You've done your job. Now your purpose is it's steady moving. You've left a legacy, boy, that's being fulfilled through me, your cuz. And he said, John the Baptist was greater than any human being on the planet. Watch what he say about you in the next verse. Verse 12. I'm done after this. Hill. And, and from the days of John the Baptist, until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault and violent men seized it by force as a, as a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom. It sought with most arid zeal and intense exertion. He said, he said the kingdom suffered violent, but the violent take it by force. <laughs> He said, watch this, over in verse 11, over in verse 11, he said, let me start at verse 10. This is the one of whom it, it is written, behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who shall make ready your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Watch what he say. Watch this here. Watch this here. Yet, he talking about you. You know what? I'm going to make this here personal. <laughs> I'm going to make it personal. He talking about me. You better make it personal. Yet, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. Is greater than him. Hey, you talking about the love? Oh my God. He said, yet, although John the Baptist is the greatest who ever became on the earth, who ever come out that mammy womb, John the Baptist was the greatest of everybody. But you are more greater, good God, thank you, Jesus, than him. The first shall be last. Come on, the last yeah, should be first. And he said, the kingdom suffered violence and the violence take it back for. He talking about people who understand the kingdom want it so bad to where they come and try to grab it. We're going to use that scripture way out of contents. 
No, no. He's talking about there are people who understand the kingdom of heaven. They understand the system. They understand the protocol. They understand how it works. And they come to take it by force. You, you're the only one don't get it. We the only ones don't get it. And he said, no, no, don't let your situation get you in the distractions of the situation to where you lose your focus on your purpose. Your purpose has everything to do with your development. Your purpose has everything to do with your life going to another level. Your purpose has everything to do with other people getting their lives transformed. Your purpose is not just about you. Your life is not just about you. It's about other people. This is why he said that we are a light set on a hill. This is why he said that we are salt that preserves the earth. This is what, um, this is what a, a mustard seed really means. That's the real parable of a mustard seed to help other folk. He said that a mustard seed is the smallest seed of all. But when it grows, it grows in our branches so that other fowls of the air can come and, and nest and lay on. This is what the purpose is. Your purpose is for other people. Your inheritance is for yourself. But purpose is for other people. Don't let the distractions of your situation have you lose focus on your purpose. This your boyhood, Pastor Full Impact Ministries. The distractions of your situations. And I'm out. Peace.